Hello and welcome to Watercolor 101. In this episode, we're going to be talking about water to paint ratio, which is a really important thing to master um, early on when we're starting with watercolor. It's a source of a lot of frustration for people. And it's a really a pretty simple thing, but sometimes it helps if we see it in action and then we can practice it ourselves. And I know I've said this many times, but um, in my videos on color mixing in Limitless Palette in that series, um, I talk about the importance of just putting paint on paper. And when we do this over and over again, especially doing things like color wheels and color charts and just practicing our color mixing, we're really learning about water to paint ratio as well. So in this series, Watercolor 101, um, it's going to be videos on basic watercolor techniques. Um, just simple things that we can all learn and practice that will help our, our painting no matter what our, um, what, what, no matter what we want to achieve, whether we're just painting to relax or we're really serious about it. Watercolor 101 will just go over some of those basic watercolor techniques. And so today we're going to talk about water to paint ratio. And I have here two of my Daniel Smith colors from my limited palette, my split primary limited palette. And I have a cool blue, which is thalo blue green shade. And I have my warm red, which is transparent pyrrole orange. And I've swatched them out here on my palette. And for a palette, I just use white dinner plates. I have a big stack of them, I get them at the dollar store. And I just I, I keep them for whatever palette I'm using at that moment. It's it, I just add more paint when I need it. It's a super easy way to have a paint palette um, without spending a lot of money, and they actually work really well, better than any palette I've ever purchased. <laughs> so it's a great thing. But anyways, um, I'm gonna start out with the Phthalo Blue Green Shade because it is a notoriously tricky color for us, um, and that is because it is super super pigmented. Okay, so it's really strong out of the tube. You can see how dark it looks. But if I just take a pinprick of this color, and by pinprick, I mean I'm touching the tip of my brush into the paint, and then I'm moving it to my palette, and I'm mixing plenty of water with it. So even with just a pinprick, I start to get a blue shade. So I'll take another pinprick and add it to my palette a little bit more. And you can see I get a really strong color with just the tiniest amount of this pigment, okay? So this color here, when I have mostly water, and, and when I say mostly water, um, look at how easily this moves on the palette, okay? So when we have mostly water, that is considered, to me, a tea wash. All right, I'm gonna call it a tea wash. So if I put it on my paper, it's very pale and pastel. Okay, this is really important in watercolor because we start with light colors because we don't mix white into our pigments to make lighter hues. So I want this really light color to start and I can build this up. If I put it down too dark, it's not as easy to take it away, but it's really easy to build it up to a darker color. So that is what I consider a tea wash, using just a tiny bit of pigment and a lot of water, okay? So it's, it's like a very, very pale tea wash. Now I'll do the same with transparent pyrrole orange. I'll take a little pinprick and put it down on my palette and then mix plenty of water into it. So I get a very light version of transparent pyrrole orange. And you can see how transparent it is. Both of these colors, when I put them on the paper, you can really see the white of that paper shining through still. It's very, very transparent. So that is a tea wash, okay? And we wanna use tea washes when we're first beginning a painting, perhaps, um, and we want to, to kind of map out our painting but don't want to commit to a dark color just yet. And we also need to use it when we just need a pale color, right? So that's a tea wash. Now, if I go back to my phthalo blue and I pick up a little bit more of this pigment and I mix it in, do you see how quickly it becomes dark? I mean, that was just, just dabbing my brush into it like you would a normal pigment. But look how dark this gets instantly. It's still moving freely on my palette, okay? But if I put a swatch of this down next to the tea wash, you can see how much darker that is. 
Okay, it's much, much darker. Now, sorry, my cat Sam just thinks it's grand to help me with my videos, so just see if you see a cat shadow, it's Sam. So you can see how, how, much, how dramatically different these two are just by adding a little bit more pigment. However, you can still see the paper shining through this color even though it's very dark. And I can add, if I just took straight phthalo, phthalo blue and put it on my palette, and then paint it a little bit with this, it's really, really dark. And it sort of covers up the whiteness of the paper. However, if I used a dry brush and picked up some phthalo blue, and rubbed it on my palette. See how it's not moving as easily? And when I put my brush through it, you can kind of see brush marks. That is an incorrect amount of water. Even though I, I'm trying to get a dark color, I want my paint to move freely. And here's what happens. So if I put this down, see how it kind of skips around and I really have to make an effort to cover the, the part of the paper that I want to paint. And I'm really getting none of that white paper shining through. So all I would have to do is add a little bit of water to this, even a little bit more pigment. And as long as I've got, I can put as much pigment as I want, but I need to have that paint moving freely on the palette. Nice and juicy, I call it, okay? So again, I have this super dark saturated color but it moves freely and it settles beautifully on the paper. Now, the same thing is true with the transparent pyro orange. If I pick up a little bit more of this and add it in, I still have that nice juicy puddle. Okay, but when I paint it on the paper, wow, what a difference, right? But it's still letting the beauty of that paper shine through. So I'm still still going to get that luminosity of the white paper shining through. And it's the same thing. I can go darker yet, but I still have that juiciness on the palette. So I can get a really, really dark, warm red, but still have the juiciness. So even here, that um, it's still moving freely, but I can paint this on and I get a, you know, almost the richest version of that color possible. Okay? So in between a tea wash and a full strength wash, we have many, many variations. And that is something that you just have to practice and sit down and say, okay, how many shades of phthalo blue can I achieve by just adding a little bit more paint, a little bit more paint, maybe a little bit more water? And we can do that and arrive with an entire spectrum of this pigment, okay? Entire, entire value scale of this phthalo blue. Same with any color on your palette. And I highly recommend you do that because different pigments have different properties. Some pigments, for instance, Hansa Yellow Light, doesn't change much. It doesn't get much darker than its tea wash, okay? It doesn't have a high chroma value. Other colors like Phthalo Blue has, have a dramatic difference. Um, let's say like Venetian Red has a dramatic difference. It goes from this very pale peachy pink to this really deep brick red. Okay, so it's a good idea to take any of your pigments and try to create a value scale with them. And that will also teach you a lot about water to paint ratio. The most important thing that I can tell you is that no matter how light or how dark you mix a color, you want it to be moving freely on your palette. You want to put enough water into it to, to allow it to apply beautifully and smooth to your paper. Okay, so you don't have to wrestle with it. Now, here's an interesting thing, and I'm just going to turn my palette a little bit. You won't see the main colors anymore, but I just want a little white space to show you this. So, let's say I want to mix a beautiful gray, kind of a lavender gray. So I can start with just a tiny bit of my phthalo blue green shade, and then I can add in a touch of my transparent pyro orange, my warm red. Okay, and there I got a brown, so I'll just pick up a little bit more blue and add it in until I start to get a gray. All right, a little bit more orange. So I just kind of go back and forth between the two 
until I get a beautiful gray. Now I can add a little bit more water to this, nice and juicy on my palette, even a little more because I want this to be really pale, okay? And I can paint this out and get a lovely tea wash of a very light gray. Let me just get some of that up. All right, so you see this beautiful pale luminous gray that I can achieve. But what if I want to make black? Well, I'm just going to start with a little bit more phthalo blue, as dark as I can get it while it's still juicy on my palette. And then I'll pick up some of the transparent pyrrole orange and mix it in. And look at that, an instant black. But it's still a luminous black, okay? I can mask this out, just paint it freely on the paper because my paint has plenty of water in it. But I can still see the texture of the paper. I can still see the lightness of the paper shining through. This is a really important thing to master. So what I suggest is, that, is get out two colors. And a, a warm red and a cool blue are a great place to start. And make a value scale with each of them. Make a value scale with all six of your split primary colors, um, or any color on your palette, and then pick two that would make black. So blue and orange would make black, um, like a warm yellow and a violet would make black, a red and a green would make black. So you can pick two colors, okay, that, that will make black, or even you can use a red, yellow, and blue and make black. And you can start with a really pale gray and work up to a black and, and create a value scale for yourself. So from light to dark, all right? So you, you, you can even start with dark and add a little bit of water. So I'm adding a little bit of water to that black and I'm swatching it out. Probably added too much. Hold on one second. Okay, and then I can add a little bit more water and swatch it out and add a little bit more water and swatch it out. And I'll just keep going across adding more water until I create the entire value scale of those two pigments mixed together. So this is a great thing to practice. Just putting paint on paper teaches you about water to paint ratio and it's a really important thing to master. Um, it's also the reason why we get smooth application compared to, let's say if I just took straight transparent pyrrole orange and tried to make a dark swatch and went back and forth. I might get some streaking in my paint, but if I have plenty of water in it, so it's nice and juicy, and I go back and forth, I can get a much smoother application. Okay? All right, I hope this was helpful. There will be more of these videos coming soon. And if you have anything specific that you would like me to address, please leave it in the comment section and I'll do my best to make a video. All right, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for being here. I hope you'll also consider subscribing to my channel so you'll get updates on all the latest videos and follow me on Facebook at Kateri Ewing Watercolors and on Instagram at Kateri Ewing. I'll leave links for those in the description below. As always, thanks for being here.